that's that. I, I love what you said earlier about the exploration of who am I? Yes. And then the song saying, shifting it from a question of who am I to who I am. Yes. And, and it, that's a very... One has a question mark at the end of it, and one has an exclamation point at the end of it. And <laughs> two different things. And this whole journey is really from who am I to who I am, and then, as you say, integrating it or embodying it, becoming it. Yes. And, and then, and then, and becoming it. This is where how we can, you know, find a better way for ourselves. But we we're, we're still whether we're needing to spend more time with ourselves or, or deal with this this health situation that's evolving yes we're going, to, we're going to be stepping back out there from a different place with each other and and god they, they say that what the world needs now is love sweet love and that and our spirits being brought to it uh during this time of transition awakening and awareness is so important absolutely true Absolutely true. I, I wrote a little poem just the other day, which speaks, I think, to this, and I, I'd love to share it with you, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. So it goes like this. The adversary has silently slipped through the cracks in our walls. The protective shields and barricades we've erected for millennia to keep the other at bay are failing. This adversary, it respects no boundaries, no rules or regulations, no army, nor weapon, nor bunker can defeat it. So what can be done? How do we respond to such imminent danger? Well, possibly, this adversary is really an ally an honorable opponent, confronting the old ways and forcing new ways to arise, new ways of seeing, being, and doing. Can we learn to befriend this adversary and become allies with this transformative force, open to the change that is upon us, and take a step with instead of against. So, yes, how can we be with this process and understand that it's guiding us to connect more deeply, more intimately with that innate intelligence, that innate being that is shining within us and it is waiting simply for us to open to it and, and then allow it to be shared. And that, that is important. And that's so beautiful, Jim. You know, your whole life has been to serve in that way, to help others, you know, to, to share this process. We're, we are all on the road, you know, of evolving and, and waking and realizing that this life is so much bigger, so much more in you know, intimate than we realize. And it is in sharing with others, in connecting with others, that we will learn, you know, to move through, you know, all of the challenges that uh, are, are there in our lives. And, and, and that is there. And, and when we, we feel that connection, when we feel that guiding essence that's there within us and around us, well then fear will dissipate and true intelligence, you know, will come to the forefront and we'll be able to act, you know, with this more inspired way of being. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's uh, beautiful. I, I love the poem. Thank you. And, and the adversary brought something to my mind. Yes. I sat in a meditation once to try to understand the purpose of fear right. and the purpose of uh, anger. Mm -hmm. And I sat with that asking and, and, and encountered these energies, didn't exactly have them sitting in a chair across from me, but I mean, 
I sat right. with their energy and said, yes. why are you here? Mm -hmm. And it became so clear that fear was this emptying or opening part of us that's looking for something that it needs. Absolutely. And it's, it's so it's a place that opens us to bring the I am we are too. Mm -hmm. uh, the other side of it, frustration or, or anger is empowering. It's an energy that empowers Shh. us. Absolutely. And if we're able to be with that and let it move through us and allow it to be what encourages us, brings courage into us, these, these adversaries that we see that we sometimes judge as being wrong or find ourselves guilty for experiencing are really, as you're saying, one we can join with and, and, and walk with and that can serve us when we're open to it as far as that's concerned. Um, I, I, I was thinking as you were saying and we were sharing, mm -hmm. we're true we're joined, therefore I am. Yes. And we are, you know, mm. that's the key, I think. That That's the key, that's the key. You know, a lot of studies are, are being done now around the world with what is at the root cause, you know, of, of most difficulty, most addictions, most, um, you know, the depressive states. And what they've come to is, is a realization that is when a human being feels that they are no longer connected, that they are no longer in a relationship, and especially in relationship with themselves, mm -hmm. then there is unease, there is disease, there is distortion. You know, there is great suffering and such tragedy. And so one of the key things is to understand the importance of connecting with ourselves, being much more uh, able to stop and listen and learn humbly <laughs> to uh, allow for life to guide us. And, and understand that, yes, our intellect and, you know, our personalities and all, all the, I, I think, the talents that, that we have and the abilities that we have will be put to good use. But it needs to be guided, you know, by uh, a, a loving presence that understands the importance of interconnectedness. And this situation is going to help us to interconnect more in a different way, but interconnect more. And I feel that that is, is guiding us in our evolutionary process to a state of consciousness, a state of awareness, you know, which then will translate itself into different ways that we will live as human beings on this planet. And we need it. We surely do need it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, 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 it's so beautiful to be able to stop long enough to look at this as something completely different. And, and, and it doesn't have to be a tragedy. It, it is a natural evolution in our lives. It's beautiful to have this time to be able to talk about uh, who you've been, who you are, what you share, how you see these things. They're, yeah. they're so uh, inspiring and, and inviting to explore in your gentleness, in your poetry, in your music, I, I so appreciate you bringing that to us and sharing that with us today. Uh, you spoke of uh, the center and, and my congregation, Sarasota Center of Light. There yes. is a fellowship and classes and so many things going on there. If anybody in our listening audience wants to know more about that, uh, www.sarasotacenteroflight.com. Uh, know that we're always there. My contact information is there. And and if you want to connect with me directly, uh, you can certainly contact me at R-E-B-J-I-M-T-O-O-L-E -E at gmail.com. Um, you'll find uh, Jean-Marc's information at his website, www.jeanmarcgerard.com, uh, so that you can look further into what he shares, who he is, what we are. Uh, again, thank you so very much for this opportunity to look into ourselves together, uh, mm -hmm. to chat, to mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. it with others. I mean, we're, we're being what we're talking about today. Uh, and, <laughs> Hopefully and, so. Yo, no, only, absolutely. It's certainly. the only way it works. Is we have to walk our talk. You know? Right, exactly. <laughs> and, and then, you know, I, I benefited by 
being touched by your music, by your poetry, as did the listeners. And so thank you for joining with me. Thank you for being the I am you are. Thank you for being the I am we are. Yes. And being able to share this with so many who will listen and be blessed by it. Thank you, Jim. And thank you for, for everyone who will listen to this and allow, you know, whatever resonates with them to be shared. To, um, this, is how, this is how it works. We, we share together. We don't do this alone. We need each other. We do. We do. Everybody out there, be safe, be well, um, have fun, a little freedom, fulfillment, have something good to eat, and God bless to everybody.